Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we gather now to remember our Lord's sacrifice, and in that remembering by the grace of God, make it present so that we may share in its fruits through faith. We keep the memorial of St. Pius of Pietrocina, popularly known as Padre Pio, a man most remarkable in the gifts that God gave him and in his willingness to accept those gifts, invest them, no matter what their cost. Let us ask his intercession now, we who have been blessed by the Lord with many gifts, as we acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy. Grant through his intercession that we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for everything under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from this toil? I have considered the task that God has appointed for the sons of man to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into their hearts without man's ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, my mercy and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Lord, what is man that you notice him? The son of man that you take thought of him. Man is like a breath, his days like a passing shadow. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once when Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowd say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, the Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated. So we hear this morning how Luke in his gospel presents that scene at Caesarea Philippi where Jesus asks his disciples, who do the crowds say that I am and who do you say that I am? In Matthew's version, This event is tied to the Lord's commission to Peter. You are the rock. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A commissioning to Peter that is extended in the life of the church to the successor of Peter the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. In Luke's version, it's different. Peter makes the declaration, a slightly different declaration, and maybe this is um, a slightly different event, or, well, it's difficult to say. Peter says, you are the Christ of God. You are the Messiah of God. But what follows isn't Jesus commissioning Peter, but rather Jesus rebuking Peter <laughs> and the disciples rebuking them and directing them not to tell this to anyone. How do we understand that? We understand it by what Jesus then says to them. The Son of Man, referring to himself, a title that comes from the book of Daniel of a of a man who somehow has a unique relationship to the divine the son of man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and then and only then on the third day be raised It seemed then that when Peter said, you are the Christ of God, you are the Messiah of God, he had an inadequate understanding of what that meant. That it was, uh, his idea of a Messiah was of the conquering hero. 
which among those who are still waiting for the Messiah, uh, they still have that kind of idea. And when asked, well, why do you not believe that Jesus is the Messiah, they will tell you very clearly, because he was executed as a criminal. How can such a man be the Messiah? Suffering. Suffering. I... Recently with one of our uh, middle school children in religion class, um, I forget exactly what we were talking about, the specific point, but the student the student's answer to my question was, God does not wish us to suffer. And my response was, why would you think that? In fact, does Jesus not in fact say the opposite? And do not the apostles say the same? If you're going to follow me, Jesus says, the cross. Suffering. No, it's, it's secular culture that says, if there is a God, this God would not tolerate any suffering in the world. God does not wish us to suffer. But of course, what suffering are we talking about? The suffering that leads to life or the suffering that leads to death? A beautiful gospel, providentially, that falls on this feast day of Padre Pio. And Padre Pio is next to Our Lady, St. Joseph, St. Francis of Assisi, the most beloved saint in Italy. The Italians, the believers, they love him. He was born in the 1880s, late 1880s. He died in 1968. Um, it was through uh, his apostolic work, even though he was essentially a, um, a somewhat cloistered Capuchin Franciscan, through his work, one of the great hospitals in an impoverished area of Italy was built in San Giovanni in Rotondo. Padre Pio suffered greatly in his life. From an early age, um, physical infirmities throughout his lifetime. He also suffered at the hands of religious ecclesial, ecclesiastical authorities who, whether out of jealousy or suspicion or, I don't know, perhaps a best interpretation would be just a kind of prudence, um, doubted the stigmata that Padre Pio received in 1918 uh, when he was what, 33 years old? 33, interesting age. The age our, our Lord died. There are a handful of saints um, who, in the history of the church, St. Francis, um, 
I don't know if it was St. Rita who also did, I'm not sure, uh, but who received the stigmata. And we might say, well, why? Why did they do that? Why did the Lord give them that? What's the meaning of that sign? It isn't so much a sign of holiness. It wasn't the Lord saying, I give them this so that you will know these are holy people. Although in the case of these saints, they were. But the meaning of the sign is not that they are holy, but it is through the suffering of Christ our head and of his members that holiness is perfected in the faithful. And Padre Pio would, when he would celebrate Mass, uh, cover up the wounds of his hands. because he did not want to give the religious authorities or anyone the idea that he was boasting of this. See, I'm a holy person. The evidence, I got the stigmata. No. The meaning of the sign is that you and I, in following Jesus, should not fear the suffering that will come. in the many forms that it does, through mockery, persecution, um, disadvantage in this world by, the, for those, by those who oppose Jesus, the church, and the gospel. And the young people in middle school, followers of Jesus, they have to be a little hardened. They have to learn how to accept that type of suffering and not give in and say, go along to get along. The only problem with that is it leads to an even greater profound suffering. Not the kind that leads to life, but to death, unless it's turned around. We live in a culture that highly values comfort. I highly value comfort. But You and I cannot allow that natural desire we have for, for comfort to prevent us from following Jesus and accepting the measure of the cross that he wills for us. You and I don't have the stigmata. I, I don't think any of you do. I know I don't. But we have other signs that the Lord gives us perhaps not so obvious to others, but they should become obvious to us of, let's say, physical infirmities. All of us have a share of that. That's our own, that's our stigmata. Not a sign that we're holy because of it, but as a sign that in the suffering that is entailed in following Jesus, that is the pathway to holiness. And in the life to come, as Jesus says, the Son of Man, the Messiah, must go through the suffering, must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. But this doesn't lead to an eternal suffering, but to an eternal joy and peace. And the third day, be raised. We have the promise of the resurrection as the Lord in his mercy and in his justice and in his wisdom gives us a share in the suffering of Jesus. Saint Padre Pio, pray for us. Let's stand. With confidence in the mercy of the crucified, let us pray through the intercession of St. Pius. Lord, for those who give their lives to the mystery of the cross and the suffering it entails for the sake of others, 
Grant them the courage of their Christian vocation, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, for those who suffer without understanding the value and the power of their suffering, teach them to put their hope in the cross of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, for those who reject suffering, who flee from it. Lord, let the suffering accepted in faith and hope by others enlighten them to face their suffering and to allow grace to transform it. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for peace in the world, for the protection of our servicemen and women and first responders, for those who've fallen, for the consolation of their families, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for God's blessings of unity and peace upon all marriages and families, especially those that are struggling. And for an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for God's blessings upon our parish and all of our parish apostolates. That following the times that God decrees in our individual and communal lives, and by responding with wisdom, the wisdom of the cross, and trust in God, we may bear fruit for the new evangelization. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for those who are burdened by any need, for the sick and dying, the homeless and unemployed, for widows and orphans, refugees, immigrants and migrants, for victims of war, violence, natural disasters, persecutions, and human exploitation, for all those who are weighed down by addictions or chronic pain or mental illness, for all the suffering poor, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all those who have died in the hope of resurrection, especially among our family, friends, benefactors, and fellow parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. And for the special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. God of mercy and love, you called your servant Padre Pio to extend the mystery of the cross visibly into the lives of sinners and sufferers, that they might be converted and believe in the gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed pious be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord, amen. And this mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Miguel Angel Gutierrez. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus, your beloved Son. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Wilton our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Pius, St. Hugh, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we, who are fortified by the power of the sacrament, may learn through the example of blessed pious to seek you always above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of the new man. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us.